flat land like a man on the run Riding down Highway 61 Sides of the roads all lined with fields Nothing but sunset in the windshield As I ride into town This is where I go To slow down Miles and miles Of soybeans and corn I'm in the place Where the blues was born What's up, guys? Justin Barry here. Brad Chapel. We got the Crappie Connection back here at the Crappie Expo 2020. Branson. Down here, Branson, Missouri. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And who are you looking at here? We got the uh, Jackie and Holly Linton, a.k.a. the Green Machine. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so your husband and wife team has been fishing for a lot of years, I can tell. Yeah, we've been at it for six years now, I guess. Six years? Yeah. yeah. It seems longer than that, though. It feels longer than that. <laughs> it does feel much longer than that. <laughs> Let's yeah, kick it back some history with you guys. Um, you know, first, how long you been together? Um, so we just celebrated our 17th wedding anniversary. Oh, awesome. 17 years, huh? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and we fished together for fun, obviously, before that. I guess it's not terribly obvious, but we, we did it for fun, vacations and all that when we first got together. And then... Um, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Time out, time out, time out. Yeah, yeah. So y'all went on a vacation to go fishing together. Yeah. yeah. I mean, is there that's, any other kind of that's vacation? That's really the only vacation. Make sure my wife hears that right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's really the only vacations we have done for the most part. That's good. That's yeah. good stuff. Yeah. It, yeah. I mean, it was fun. We went with his parents a lot and camped, and, and Sardis Lake was a big one that we went to a lot and mm-hmm. learned how spider rig there. So that, That's where we learned our spider rigging technique, and, you know, all the old boys there, they they don't hold back on telling you, hey, you're doing that wrong, uh, Yankee. Yeah. <laughs> you need to go back home, uh-huh. you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where are you from again? Southern Illinois. Southern Illinois? Yeah, we, um, by Carlisle Lake. Carlisle Lake, okay. Yeah, yeah, so we both grew up close to Carlisle Lake there, so. And then we moved to Truman. Four years ago. Four years ago. Yeah, hey, I so. like Truman. Well, love that lake. Love it? Love mm-hmm. it. Of course, we're, I mean, we grew up single poling, so right. you know that lake's covered in trees and mm-hmm. the lake we grew up on there's there's no structure you don't see anything above the water mm-hmm. so the first time we go there i'm like oh my god i don't know what to do slow down everywhere yeah. there, you look there's trees it was you overwhelming know? so yeah and how many how many years uh your professional y'all been fishing together so our first tournament together was october of 2014 there was an early bird fall tournament uh crappie masters at grenada lake yeah, and we that. were yeah yeah. So, <laughs> I remember that uh, one. <laughs> so it was um, a vacation. We were going there on vacation, and he had looked it up ahead of time, and he's like, I thought maybe we should try a tournament. Maybe mm-hmm. we should tournament fish and try it. You know, We're going to be there anyway. Let's try it. Okay, sounds like fun. I don't know how to do that, but let's try it. Mm-hmm. So we pre-fished or whatever while we were there on vacation, and um, first day we did Okay. We, you know, we were in 11th place on our 11th anniversary. Huh. Had oh. 11, the same day? Had yeah. 11 pounds. Really? Yeah. And yeah. our anniversary's so. on the 11th. Yeah, so we What's thought, day yeah. two, we got this. You yeah. know, all the, the numbers are yeah. lining up. Mm-hmm. They didn't line up. <laughs> uh, boy, the weather did, though. <laughs> Just like a normal tournament. Yeah. And it poured, and it poured, and it poured. And I'm, we're in the middle of Grenada Lake, and I lost it, and I start bawling. And I can't see him sitting next to me. It's raining so hard. I, and I, I fished that tournament. Yeah, I it was bad. Yep, yep. I said, we paid to do this. Yeah. I am not doing this again. Right. So we got in. I think we ended up in 23rd place. And I did it again. A lot. A lot. <laughs> yeah. So, so, who's, so who's the boss in the boat? There's somebody got to be the boss. 
Uh, he's he ain't saying nothing. He's, I ain't he's saying, saying a that. word. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm just there to drive the boat. That's it. No, that's he, it. He's the boss. But we did you record that? <laughs> yeah, you need a copy. Yeah, I do. Okay, he's gonna make it his ringtone. Okay. <laughs> All right. But 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 we do make decisions pretty equally, and he does try to get me to make more decisions mm-hmm. that I don't want to make a lot of times. Right, so right. he's pushing you yeah. to the limits. He does. That's yeah, good. he That's wants good. he wants it to be a joint decision when we you know try a different spot or when it's time to move or stuff like that and if i have a you know if i have an opinion i'll make it you know make Mm -hmm. that decision and if not i'm like i don't care let's do whatever you want to do so and then if i think she's wrong i do what i do anyway and that's probably why i don't make a lot of those decisions because he does what he wants anyway national championship at grenada a few years ago when somebody did so well well, when that cold front come in my initial reaction was hey they're going deeper Mm -hmm. so i need to go deeper She's saying, you know, we probably need to go shallower up there in that pocket, which was, I think, where someone was yeah. that's sitting at the table. <laughs> yeah. and, and we I should probably go too. up that direction. And, and I said, no way. Them fish ain't shallow. We just up there the other day. And when we were up there, she caught one of the biggest gar I've ever seen oh. in my life. Uh, and she hates gar. She was done. She's like, I'm done. Let's leave. Nope. So nope. we turned around and went that out of there. But gar, yeah. actually. You're right. It must yeah. have been. That was my pit. You're oh. right, gar. I have never eaten a gar. No. Good. They do That's, say they that. Say, gar, yeah. gar balls. That's, That's right. Gar balls. Yeah. yeah. It tastes they like, uh, what's crab or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, no. So you got to eat it right out It's of white place. meat. Really? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But if you're wondering, they got the lime green going. If you see a lime green going, a lime green boat going down the road. Or you got a lime green truck? Maybe not, no. not anymore. Not no, no, no. We had a we had a suburban that was wrapped, but it, it. I mean, we stand out enough the way it is with the boat, so it's a little easier to hide at a ramp mm-hmm. with a white truck. <laughs> yeah. So. What's the What's the history with the term green machine with you guys? Uh-huh. At that first tournament, mm-hmm. nobody knew who we were. Mm-hmm. I guess all week they were asking Brian Sowers and Mike Valentine, who are the people in the green boat. Nobody knew who we were, and I guess it was freaking a lot of people out. Oh, yeah. so what, what green boat was y'all running? Was y'all the running? Phoenix. The, the Phoenix, Phoenix yeah. Yeah. Am I right or wrong? Did y'all have a war eagle before that? We had a green war eagle before okay. that. Yeah. Yep. Right. Yep. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. It, and and Brian just took it upon himself to call it the, they got a beautiful green boat, mm-hmm. the green machine, and it stuck completely. So Brian Sowers is Brian, the yep. he, He's the originator. He is. Yep. It yep. stuck, and, and, and we just ran with it. And so. now I'm going to have a green boat for the rest of my life. Yeah. <laughs> <Dang>. <laughs> I mean, I like green, but yeah. you know, it, he didn't know what he was doing when yeah. he said that. So I guess. you really are obligated to keep a green uh, boat. Oh, yeah. It's got to have some green somewhere, that's for sure. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> it's good. That's hilarious. So, what yeah. about your style of fishing? What would you call yourself? You know, would, I'm sure you start out spider rigging like everybody else. Have you moved into the the live scope phenomenal? Yeah. 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 Which, I mean, like he said, we both grew up single pulling mm-hmm. and only, I mean, most people do, I guess. But um, it was a big adjustment just to go to the spider rig and a lot of yeah. learning and, and all that anyway. So when it when fishing kind of has turned to the single pole and, mm-hmm. and all that, mm-hmm. I mean, that's better for us. I mean, we enjoy it a lot more. I've got a, a question, you know, I guess some of the, the lady listeners would want to know. Mm-hmm. What about, you know, spider rigging? Mm-hmm. Are you using 16 foot poles? Do you feel like that's a? Do you like to downsize or? It's a lot to handle, and usually, mm-hmm. like when we do seminars and people people ask, you know, what what size poles? How big do you use? We use 16 foot poles as tournament fishermen, but if we were just to go out having fun or whatever, we probably yeah. use 14 foot, just because okay. 16 is a lot to handle. Right. I mean, 16s are a lot to handle for anybody. Yeah. Right. I mean, you get a, a pair of big old fish on them out there, it it can wear anybody out. Yeah. So. Yeah. What kind of, uh, as, as a, any kind of starting husband and wife team giving out, what kind of pointers could you give to them? Because I, I bet if y'all look back, did you give any pointers or y'all just like, it's it's going really well now? You better have a good relationship. That's all I got to say. Yeah. If, if you can't get along yeah. on a normal basis when you're in a boat and it's raining and the wind's blowing and the fishing ain't going well and something happens, if you don't get along normally, it's not going to work out. No. You know, and I, I I think, and this is not bad. This is just how women are made. But, I mean, they're emotional, and, mm-hmm. and they take a lot of things personally. Right. And when you're on a boat for hours and hours and hours at a time, 
you're bound to get into it Mm -hmm. and you can't take what's it's just like a job you Mm -hmm. can't take outside what's going on onto the boat and whatever happens on the boat you can't take into home if you know he says a lot of things that i probably don't like right but he's frustrated and i'm frustrated and things aren't going well we just need to move forward and figure out what's going on and catch some fish so do you you think it's made your relationship stronger absolutely yeah the the first year absolutely yeah yes yeah the first year we fought a lot Mm -hmm. we were on the water about decisions and not catching fish and in the off season we we decided we needed to relax sit back and reevaluate what we were doing and we decided if we couldn't have fun there was no point in doing what we're doing so now we go out and when we started just going out to have fun we started winning we Mm -hmm. started doing better because we weren't we weren't stressing about it right that helps a lot i i would just suggest do it for fun and don't get too serious about it yeah i mean everybody wants to win in it and we are still very competitive about it we're just competitive people but it's something that we can do together that we enjoy doing together and we can't lose sight of that Mm -hmm. so how long how many years did you uh have that warrior before you got to phoenix two years two years at war eagle two years so any anybody that's in here i mean everybody loves boats and all that which what is both of y'all's views as far as going from a aluminum boat mm-hmm. to a fiberglass boat as far as a, a woman's perspective mm-hmm. as well so we had had only aluminum boats before that uh before our, phoenix is the only glass boat we've ever had mm-hmm. and he was talking about getting a glass boat and i'm like no 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 I, no i don't think so so we kind of weighed out the differences and i I am completely thrilled about going to a glass boat. Um, the ride is, and, and this is going to sound completely insane, coming yeah. from a woman that is on the water all the time. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I don't like water. What? No. You don't like water? Can you swim? I can swim, but I don't like jumping in, uh-huh. and I don't Get like... Get your yeah, I just, yeah, I yeah. don't like going under. Swim. I don't like that. That'd and so, up. yeah... So I didn't really want to go faster than we went in our War Eagle. And so we did it because the ride was going to be better and a heavier I, boat. So. I've had five back surgeries, so mm-hmm. the the ride was key for me, you know, having, yeah. having a better ride. Yeah. And the first time we took it out on Carlisle, Carlisle's just a big open boat. Right. I mean, you can go as fast as you want to. I got it out there, and I'm opening it up, and we're going down the lake, and I look over, and she's pulling her hair back <laughs> i was readjusting my ponytail I, yeah. I tapped her on the leg and pointed at the the graph and we were doing over 74 and she immediately reached down and grabbed both handles on the seat <laughs> right. yeah but she'd ridden in the wind for 15 minutes and didn't know how right. fast we she were right. enjoying it she yeah. Didn't realize it. yeah yeah i feel totally yeah. safe in a glass boat um in our phoenix anyway i mean that's really all we know and and i would I mean, everybody has to pick what's good for them, but the waves, it handles waves a lot better, and I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't hesitate to get another glass boat. It, so. it, one, one key that I can give, you know, everybody told me when I got it, I wouldn't go where the fish are because you're going to tear it up. Yeah. Fiberglass is way easier to fix than aluminum. See, I had the same opinion on that, and I, yeah, yep. I didn't know that at first. Don't you? Way easier. I mean, we, we carry gel coat with us on the road oh, really? to where if we, we, we rip the bottom. Or, like in Texas, we hit a piece of rebar. And we ripped the bottom for 14 feet, 9 oh, inches, was bad. just all the way down. And, and when I hit it, I heard it. And I knew if I turned, it'd make it like a drill bit. <laughs> right. So we just had to drive off of it. Did it stop you completely? Yeah, it stopped us. So the, you, we, were, we were idling in a cove. We were idling back, and the water was up. Yeah. And we hit that rebar. And, I mean, by the time I hit it, it was too late. I couldn't back off, couldn't turn off. So we just drug it all the way down the bottom, and then you just take that gel coat and rub it in there to dry. It was ugly. And yeah. it, it didn't it gain any always, water or nothing. It through, though. It just nope. Cracked. Just, just took cracked. all the gel coat off, pretty much. Yep. Really? Yep. But, it, you know, it was easy to repair. The guy, when I took it to the shop, it took him three days. It, uh, my War Eagle cracked in the bottom, and it took me like three weeks to get it welded because they had to take the floor out, Ooh. the foam out, weld it, put it all back together. So, I mean, there's advantages and disadvantages. You know, to right both. There. So, right, you got any gel coat, Brad? No, I don't. I probably need some. <laughs> well, well, I always got After some. That, if yeah. need. <laughs> I need to carry another jug. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Just yeah. add it with everything else you lug uh, right. along with you. Yeah, the extra lower unit and the extra yeah. prop and the extra trolling motor. Yeah. Transducers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yep. Now, y'all are uh, hummingbird reps, right? Yeah. Yep. 
and Minkota, I assume, as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Well, we're going to take a quick break. Tune into that next. We're going to dive into some hummingbird, and okay. we'll be right back at you. Yeah. All right. Holla. Muddy River, a place I'll always remember. Cabin on the lake and a fishing pole. Forever here, I'll rest my soul. I can feel 